Okay, we want to look at one last thing in Monopoly, um, comparing it to perfect competition. This might seem a little tricky, but it gives you an idea of why some people talk about how monopolies need to be regulated, that um, they're somehow not as good as perfect competition. It's sort of a bias that was in early economics has kind of gotten left there. And, you know, I think it depends on the reason something is a monopoly. If it's a, um, if it's something like control of a key resource or network externality, they might have more of a point. A natural monopoly, as we've seen, it might actually make sense for something to be a monopoly. And then finally, should we have a government barrier or not to give this monopoly? Maybe this sort of discussion would be useful for that. But we just want to look at the different outcomes, I guess you could say, that come from, a monop from, from an industry being a monopoly versus perfect competition. So what we're doing here is kind of odd because we're, we're, we're looking at this graph that I have here and saying, okay, this would have been the outcome if this was a monopoly and this would be the outcome if this was a perfect competitive firm. So I'll see if I can make some sense out of this. We have here a line drawn called marginal cost slash supply. And the reason I did that is if we think back to, say, perfect com com competition, the um, firm marginal cost curve determines their quantity for each firm that they're going to profit maximize at. And then you add all that up and you actually find out what price, excuse me, what quantity each firm is willing to supply at each price. So really the, the marginal cost and supply curve are the same. Now specifically it was only down to the um, down to the uh, shutdown point, right? So the marginal cost curve all the way down to the shutdown point, that's your supply curve. I'm not going to go into that level of detail here, but just trying to remind you that basically they're, they're, they're similar concepts. And so if this was a monopoly, then the first thing we would do is MR equals MC, bring that down, and there is your Q, and I'm going to call it M, quantity the monopolist would produce. However, let me point this out. It's always good to point this out when the opportunity provides itself. This is the quantity as determined as MC equals MR. It's profit maximizing quantity. This is not the price. You do not find price on a marginal revenue curve. You say, hey, I'm going to do this quantity. What price can I charge? If only there was a curve that just happened to tell me what price is associated with different quantities. Oh, there is. So I take my quantity M that the monopolist is going to do and I come up to the demand curve and apparently find that that's the price I'm going to charge. Okay, so there's your PMQM. Um, let's see, now we want to think about what if, and this is where it gets kind of weird, what if this was an industry that was actually being served by dozens and dozens, eh, forget that, hundreds and hundreds of perfect competitive firms, right? So if this picture we have here is the market supply, we can imagine that there is firm, perfect competition firms going on over here, right? Um, if we think about perfect competition, what we would say is, okay, here's your demand curve for the market. Remember, this is a demand curve for the market and the firm for a monopolist. But for perfect competition, it's the demand curve for the market. This would be our supply curve of the market. And then that determines the thing we're used to seeing over here. The price equals the demand curve equals the marginal revenue, right? So taking this idea back into what would it be like if this was the whole market of perfect competition. What that's telling me is this is the perfect competitive price that each individual firm is going to charge. And once you've added up all those, um, all those individual firms, they're going to produce this quantity. So we see we have a, whoa, that's fun. <laughs> we see we have a quantity QC, which is much greater than QM, okay? So the quantity a perfectly competitive industry would supply is much higher than a monopolistic industry. And then we can do the same thing with the price. You can see that the price a competitive industry would charge is much less than what a monopolist would charge. 
And so this here is basically where the bias against monopolies come from, that monopolies are going to charge a higher price and provide less output. And so a lot of the logic behind um, regulating monopolies is let's make them act more like a monopoly, uh, excuse me, more like a perfect competitor, do something to bring the price down and bring the quantity up. Now, like I, I started this whole video, you know, you can make arguments for and against monopolists. Sometimes it's more harmful than others, but I don't know if it's necessarily a good thing to say, oh, you should be more like a perfect competitor. Um, we're about to start monopolist competition, and one of the things you're going to see is you have a similar issue with monopolist competition and perfect competition, where I could do something very similar to this and say, see, the monopolistic competitor charges a higher price, and the industry produces a lower quantity than perfect competition. So let's get rid of it, right? Let's make everything perfectly competitive. But what we're going to see is that um, in the case of monopolist competition, it's an okay trade-off because you're getting um, you're getting more options, you're getting more variety. Um, so maybe it's not necessarily the thing to aspire to is to be perfectly competitive. To bring it back to monopoly, you know, there are cases where you could say the monopolist is in this sense harming society by restricting quantity and, and charging a higher price. But in the case of natural monopoly, this is really the more efficient way for that particular type of product to be produced. So anyway, takeaway from this is this understanding of what a monopolist would charge versus an industry served as perfect competition. There is no arguing that this is what we see, that perfectly competitive industries would produce a higher quantity at a lower price. And that, that you can't deny. All right. Uh, from here, we want to move into monopolistic competition in the next video.